Hello, well done for making time to prepare for your Edexcel GCSE Computer Science Paper 2 on-screen Python test. This is the last video in the series um, where we go through the past paper at the back of the revision workbook. Um, so hopefully, if you're in year 11 at Fulford, you've been given a copy of this workbook for free. Um, if you've lost your copy, then get in touch because we can buy it cheaper than you can get it online. We're not on commission, um, but we think this is a really good way to prepare for your GCSE. Um, so, this is the last question, the hardest question. Um, it's deliberately designed to be hard, so don't panic if you find some of this challenging. Um, but hopefully, we can build up some confidence through experience and practice um, today. So, let's um, read through the first line so we can see roughly how long it's going to take. Hopefully, this video will take about 12 minutes or so, which will give you enough time to work through at your own pace. Um, uh, and then the very first thing that we do is skip the question for now and rename it to the final um, file name. So file and save as uh, Q06 finished. Uh, and let's read through. So menu options for meat eaters and vegetarians are stored in a two dimensional data structure implemented as a list. So that's the options and they're stored in here. So these are menu options, presumably the name of something. Um, how much it costs and whether or not it's um, vegetarian uh, or whether or not it's got meat. I don't really know. Let's see. Each record in the data structure has a field for the name. Yep, good. And then the price. Yep, good. Uh, and the last field is true if the option's vegetarian and false if it's not. OK, so that clarifies it. So true means that this is vegetarian and it costs 5.55. We're assuming pounds, but we're not sure. Um, a program is needed to separate the options into two different comma separated value text files, one for meat eaters and the other for vegetarians. So we've got some file names here um, and we're going to have to sort these out. Interesting. Um, each record in the file consists of the name price separated um, by a comma. Vegetarian file already has records in it which must be retained. OK, so this vegetarian options file should exist. Um, so I did control O so that I could open all files and there, yeah, here we go. We've got three vegetarian options and when we write to this file, um, we mustn't overwrite this. So if we ever have a file like this, I am going to take a backup copy. So save a copy as backup just so that we don't accidentally break it. OK, write a program to meet all the requirements. <laughs> Append all the vegetarian options to the vegetarian file. Write all the meat options to the meat file and don't do anything else. We should use comments and white space um, in order to make it as easy to understand as possible. Right. Um, OK, so we're given the structure. Sometimes you get nothing at all in a question six in the final question. Sometimes you get some stuff to work with. Um, so let's decompose and start with just comments. So first of all, um, oh, that's for global comments. Sorry, global variables, the main program. OK, here we go. Um, we want to open both files. Um, at the end of the program, we should close both files. Then we want to go through every item in the options. Um, if it's vegetarian, write it to the veggie file. Otherwise, add it to the meat eaters file. OK, so we've used white space. We're using comments. We haven't written any code at all yet. But we've planned out what we want to do, and we're going to get some credit for it, even if that's um, even if we don't get any further than this. So I would recommend opening the PLS to guide you through how to open files. So you get a printed copy of this in your paper two exam. I'm just going to scan through to find the bit to do with um, opening from a file. I'd strongly recommend going through this, um, highlighting a copy. You won't be able to take a highlighted copy into your exam, but if you know where to look, for um, the stuff and how to understand it, it will really help you. So we want to open a file 
um, we can open it in read mode or write mode or append mode. So there's no files we want to open for reading because we've got the data already in a 2D list. Um, but we do want to open one in write mode and another in append mode. We're going to have to open the veggie version in append mode to add on things onto the end. Um, and the meat one in write mode to create the file or overwrite it. So let's see. Um, open both files. Let's have a uh, meat file. And then we'll open. So that that's like this a file ID that we can use to then close it later. Um, and then the file name. Well, we're given a constant up here. So we can open that file. And we want to open it in write mode. We're making a global variable. So we should probably say that that's going to be a, a file. I'm just going to say it doesn't store anything yet. Um, and then meet file. Oops, no, we've got that already. What's the next one? Uh, let's call it veggie file. Um, oh, got my um, logic error here. That should be the file name of the meat file. Um, and then they've just called it veg file. So this one needs to be opened in append mode. And then we should remember to close it afterwards. Um, so meet file.close and veggie file.close. If you're used to using the different syntax to write to a file, like um, with meet file um, equals open, etc. Um, that will automatically close it for you, but um, I'm going to keep it simple and stick with what the PLS tells us to do. Um, we have to close a file at the end so that it frees up resources and so that you can open up your file in another program. Um, so, and you're probably going to get marks for both opening it and closing it. I always close it as soon as I've opened it, otherwise I'm likely to forget it a little bit later. Right, go through every menu option. So this is a two-dimensional list here. Um, so we're going to iterate through the outer list, um, first of all. Uh, so we've got two ways of doing this. We could say for menu option in um, the options. And this will um, mean that menu option is going to be a list of three things, which is probably absolutely fine. Or we could have said for i in range len the options so that we can have a value for 0 or 1. Um, but I think this is easier to read and understand. So for now, let's just print it to see if it works. So we're going through and we can see each of these here. Good. Um, so now these are going to happen for every menu option. I've selected them all and press tab. If you don't know yet that you can select multiple lines and indent them or unindent them with shift tab, that's really helpful. Uh, if it's vegetarian, okay, how do we work out that? So it's going to be menu option. That will give us a one dimensional list that was part of our two dimensional list. Um, and we're interested in the third item in that one dimensional list. So if it's in the third position, the indexing expression is going to be two. That's a position zero, that's a position one, and that's a position two. So if that is equal to true, well, I've forgotten which way around it is. Let's read the question again. If the last field is true, it's vegetarian. Great. So if it's true, then we do something. What do we do? Well, we want to write to the veggie file. OK, how do we write again? Let's check the PLS. Uh, we want to write, fab, write a single string to a file. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to do is put a backslash in there so that we move on to the next line, um, because I'm likely to forget to do that afterwards. I might even put a comment on there. Um, and then what else do we want to add in? I guess we want to have the name and then a comma and then the price. So you could do it all on the same line if you want, um, but I'm going to try and make it as easy to read as possible. 
Uh, so let's put the um, the menu name. In fact, I'll do that in the um, outside of the if statement. So let's say menu choice or menu option name. Or I suppose we could just go for name, um, and that's going to be menu option um, zero, the first thing in the list. That then is a global variable, so I should declare it here. And it's a string, so I'll set it to zero. Let's put some comments in to explain what these are. Um, what else do we need? The price. Great. I'm going to put a comment in to say extract data from 1D list. Remember, a two dimensional list is just a list of lists. Um, where are we up to? Um, do you know what? I'll say veggie equals menu option two. Um, so that here I can just say if veggie. And that's going to be a Boolean value. So I'll set it to a Boolean value here. Or sometimes Ed Excel does this, um, which I don't think gives you an error. It's this that gives me an error because I'm not saying I haven't told it to write anything yet. OK. Um, what am I doing? I'm trying to write the name and then a comma because it's a comma separated value. Let's get the question back up so we can see what's going on. Uh, yeah, the name and price separated by a comma. And then the, the price, did they call it? Yeah, good. And then we're adding a new line on the end. Uh, so then otherwise, add it to the meat eaters file. OK, so we're going to do something very similar to this. But the only difference is we need an else. That's what otherwise means. And we're going to write to a different file instead. Um, so then we can say meet file. There we go. Um, and I reckon that should work. We'll see. No. <laughs> Here we go. File.write. Um, we can only concatenate strings, not floats. So the price is currently a float, and we need to convert it to a string before we can concatenate. So let's. Um, we've got two choices. We can either do our conversion here, um, or if we did that, we'd have to do it here as well. I'll do it here and convert that to a string. Um, I've also got a global variable here, which I haven't declared. Um, and it's a string. I'm just going to put in like that, an empty string. Let's try. Great. Looks like nothing's happened. But um, if we open up the file, um, let's see. We open up vegetarian options. Yeah, we've got the vegetarian options. Or has that got all of them? We've got 10 in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Have we got meat options? Let's see. Control O to open. There we go. There's meat options. Great. That seems to work. Now, if we run it again, Meat options should stay the same, but the vegetarian options should have um, more added onto the ends because we opened it in append mode. Let's have a look and see. I don't like how funny um, doesn't remember the file type the last time you opened it in. Have a look, vegetarian options. Yeah, there we go. So bear in mind, if you've got the file open and it changes, in Thony you have to reopen it 
um, it doesn't automatically update. Um, but it did append them onto the end, I think. I hope. Yes, look, it's added um, tabulate twice. And the first time it ran, it added these ones in, and these ones were in there already. Fab, I think it's worked. So things to remember here. Always take care to use white space. Always start by adding your comments. Um, work through decompose first, and then any global variables that you use, remember to put them back um, at the top um, to declare them. I know it's not strictly necessary in Python, but it's what Edexcel expects you to do. And if they're going to give out marks for it, then you want to get those marks. It's also considered good practice um, from the Edexcel's point of view, even if not from um, uh, Guido Van Rossum style Python um, point of view, because it tells you what the global variables are and what data types they store. I don't know if you can do this. Can you have file to say this is going to be a file object? It'd be nice if you could, but no, you can't. So that's why you've got to say none here. OK, I hope this has been helpful. All the very best as you prepare for your paper too. Um, yeah, all the best. Thank you.